Hello and welcome to Formula Phil. How are we doing? How's the form? Right, today we're going to be doing a Welsh driver called John Godfrey Parry Thomas. Now sadly, this Welshman was killed during a land speed record attempt at Pendine Sands in 1927. Now I was always under the impression that Parry Thomas was some sort of maverick underdog that took on the likes of Campbell and Seagrave with very little money in a kind of ramshackle car. Now most of this is true. Parry Thomas never had the backing that Campbell or Seagrave had. In fact, he pretty much funded himself buying his record-breaking car from uh, the deceased Count Zabrowski. In fact, he paid £125 for that huge 27-litre Liberty V12 aeroed engine car. But this beast was by no means a record-breaking car until he went over it with a fine-tooth comb because he was a fantastic engineer with many patents to his name in the fields of electrical and automotive engineering. Parry Thomas came to motor racing quite late in his life. He was 36 when he first drove a car around Brooklands and just decided, this is my life, I love motor racing, giving up a chief engineer job at Leyland Motors, a decision I'm sure he didn't take too lightly. And in fairness, he was fairly successful at Brooklands. He won 38 races over five seasons, but by 1925 he was bitten by the speed bug, the land speed bug. And as of April 28th, 1926, in Pendine Sands, Parry Thomas smashed the land speed record in his 125 pound, okay, completely redesigned car, Babs as he christened it. He drove along the six mile beach at a whopping 170 miles an hour, or 273.6 kilometers an hour. Now, to this day, 170 mile an hour is extremely fast, but in 1926, it was insanity speed. In fact, the years prior to Parry's record-breaking run, Malcolm Campbell was barely eking out 150 mile an hour. In 1924, he did 146.6, and in 1925, he did 150 0.87, stating that was probably the fastest he could go in the Sunbeam 350 horsepower car that he had. So in little, yeah, a little under a year, Parry Thomas destroyed the land speed record with 170 mile an hour, 20 miles an hour faster, which is a stratospheric leap in land speed record terms. Malcolm Campbell congratulated Parry Thomas and his car Babs, but he was worried. He didn't know how he could make up that difference or even match that speed. And in fact, it nearly took him a full year as he went out in February the 4th, 1927 with a Napier Campbell, now christened Bluebird, that cost a fortune, thousands of pounds, and in the 1920s, which we're talking crazy money. And then Malcolm Candle did 174.8 mile an hour. J.G. Parry Thomas, not to be outdone, and without the financial backing that Campbell had, thought that Babs could clear 180 mile an hour. So with some slight tweaking of the carburetors and some changes to the bodywork for better aerodynamics, Parry Thomas went out again to reclaim his world land speed record. It was March 3rd. And it is said that Parry Thomas was suffering from a very strong flu. In fact, some of the old video footage that I could try and find for you shows Parry coughing a hell of a lot beside Babs. And even in Babs, this man was not well. But he had an incredible drive to take the record. Parry Thomas also knew that Seagrave was to attempt a run on Florida Beach. So it was really a case of now or never. So, even though he was frightfully unwell, he warmed up Babs and headed out on a timed run, never to return. Now, popular myth was that the chain drive snapped and decapitated him. And this is actually untrue. A uh, subsequent restoration of the car in 1969 revealed that the chain drive was intact. And it is thought that perhaps a rear wheel failure happened and the car rolled over, causing the fatal injuries. Now we'll probably never know what happened, but as I mentioned before in another video, I think it was the Le Mans racing one, that I have a brother that is a sand speed record holder at Pendine Beach, and I've been there, and I know the beach is constantly moving, it's very windy there, so anything could happen, and at those speeds, well you don't get a second chance, but I'd imagine death would be instantaneous. 
J.G. Parry Thomas was the first recorded man to die in a land speed record attempt. And they buried his motor car Babs on the beach afterwards. And it remained buried up until 1969, where another Welshman, Owen Wynne Owen, painstakingly restored it. And I actually got to get a good look at it last year at Pendine Sands. And it's hard to describe the actual sheer size of these things until you look at them in the flesh. They're just massive. They're like the size of someone's living room. If you have a large living room, they're all engine and the driver just sits in the back, probably full throttle and hold on for dear life. It really kind of puts in perspective how brave these men were. Like even now, let alone then, they were truly stepping into the unknown. Um, Funny enough, actually, when I saw Babs last year, it was uh, it had a couple of oil pans underneath it, so it was actually leaking oil. Kind of made me smile a small bit. But that's that. That was that was Parry Thomas. He died at age 42 doing something he loved, and it was an amazing trifecta at the time with those three lads juking it out for higher and higher top speeds. So I guess a tragic end in the in the name of human endeavor. Well, Parry Thomas, he just seemed to be a a great character because I read that he in fact he helped Malcolm Campbell with the gearbox of Bluebird the car that actually beat his own record he was the definition of a, a sound man and definitely a fella that should be remembered and revered now that's all for me today I really hope you enjoyed it if you did please like and subscribe thank you for watching and if you didn't like it good luck <laughs>